on inflation, um, let me say that uh, we do expect that um, as the couple of things. One, first, as the very low readings of last March and April drop out of the 12 month calculation as we move forward this year, we expect readings on inflation to move up. That's called base effects. That'll be a temporary effect and, and it, it won't really signal anything. More importantly, though, with all the factors we've been discussing, uh, you could see spending pick up pretty substantially in the second half of the year. And that would be a good thing, of course, but it could also put upward pressure on prices. And I would just say uh, that um, essentially uh, it, it's not, it doesn't seem likely that that would result in very large increases or that they would be persistent. We've all been living in a world for a quarter of a century and more where all of the pressures were disinflationary you know, pushing downward on inflation. We've averaged less than 2% inflation for more than the last 25 years. Inflation dynamics do change over time, but they don't change on a dime. And so we don't really think how, see how a burst of, of, uh, of fiscal support or, or spending uh, that's not, that doesn't last for many years would actually change those inflation dynamics. I, I will also say there's uh, uh, forecasters need to be humble and have a great deal to be humble about, frankly, but so if, if we turn if, if it does turn out that, that unwanted inflation pressures uh, arise and they're persistent, then we have the tools to deal with that and we will. You ask about the U.S. economy and the world economy. I, I do think, and um, many forecasters agree, that once we get this pandemic under control, um, you know, we, we could be getting through this more, much more quickly than we had feared. And, and that would be terrific. But it's not done yet. The job is not done. That's the thing I keep coming back to is we've, we've got to finish the job with the pandemic, get it under control so that the U.S. economy can really reopen. 